I hope you've identified some outdated beliefs. So in this video, I want to talk to you about breaking through beliefs. Now, fire walking, and by that I mean walking across burning hot coals of about 1700 degrees Fahrenheit. Fire walking has been practiced on every continent around the globe, except Antarctica. And it's also been practiced by cultures around the globe for thousands and thousands of years. Some cultures use the fire walk for power and energy. Others for healing or a rite of passage, for example, from childhood to adulthood. Now, just for a moment, consider the reason this powerful ritual would persist for thousands and thousands of years. Because it's not as if the world needs more fire walkers. However, what the world does need are people who can face their fears with courage and break through their beliefs of what's really possible. And in that, the fire walk certainly works. At my fire walking events, the first requirement is to sign a mandatory waiver. And in that waiver, it states that the fire walk is indeed a dangerous activity and there is a risk of being hurt. Well, of course, many people are naturally reluctant to sign such a form, and perhaps I should add that nobody is ever forced to walk across those coals against their will. But what I find so beautiful to watch and witness are the shifts and changes that occur within people over the course of literally a few hours. You know, I've seen people move from, that's impossible, to it's possible, from can't do, to can do and literally dance across the fire in joy. You know, it's a blow your mind experience that shifts the boundaries that have been created in our minds and by conditioning. The fire walk seems to do something to the human psyche that helps people overcome limitations internally and externally, shifting reality and beliefs about what's really possible. Now, the placebo is another example of challenging beliefs about what's possible and also highlights the impact our beliefs have over our health. So basically, a placebo is a fake pill and it should have no effect on your body. Yet tests and trials have proven again and again and again they are, that they often work as well or even better than drugs or surgery. Now, because the patient isn't aware that he's being given a placebo and believes that the actual drug is being taken, it appears that the belief that the drug will work is all that's needed to allow the healing to occur. In 1957, Mr. Wright was found to have cancer. Hospitalized in California with large tumors, he'd been given only days to live. Now, he heard that a horse serum called Cribosin appeared to be effective against cancer and decided that was the route for him. So just before the weekend, he received his first injection. And then surprised doctors when by Monday, he was up and about, joking and laughing with other patients and extolling the healing virtues of Cribosin. His doctor wrote later that the tumors had melted like snowballs on a hot stove. Now, the story doesn't end there because months later, Mr. Wright came across a report that actually slammed Cribosin. He subsequently suffered a relapse, but thankfully, his doctor probably advised him not to believe everything that's in the newspapers and went ahead injecting him with a supposedly newer and improved version of the drug. Actually, he was injected with water, distilled water, but who cares? Because the tumor masses melted once again. Now, apparently, Mr. Wright was healthy for another few months until he read yet another report that stated that Cribosin was ineffective. Guess what? He died two days later. And that certainly proves the power of beliefs. Now, that said, there was an episode on David Suzuki's The Nature of Things, and it shared the example of a woman with very bad irritable bowel syndrome, IBS for short. Now, in this experiment, the patient was told that she was being given a placebo, and yet her IBS disappeared. 
the placebo still had the same effect even though the patient knew it was just a placebo. So could it be the excitement of expectation that creates what many would call magical shifts. Now, as it becomes apparent that the placebo effect has very tangible results, new techniques of brain imagery and visualization are uncovering a host of biological mechanisms that can turn a thought, belief, or desire into an agent of change in cells, tissues, and organs. It would seem that human perception is based on what the brain, based on previous experience, believes will happen next. That means your past could be negatively impacting your now and future. No doubt you've probably created a belief system based on what's happened to you in the past. In fact, most people believe that their past is what has created who they are now. And this is an example of experiences creates belief. When actually it's the other way around, beliefs create experience. Your inner world creates your outer world. And the old model of the world was that the past does indeed create the present and the future. However, the quantum world has now provided evidence that we just live in a series of nows. This means that if you've had challenges or situations that still bother you right now, the problem is how you're choosing to represent past experiences in the now. I mean, after all, if something happened to you when you were five years old, you can't literally go back to being five years old. All you can ever do is represent that experience in the now when you were five years old. So a shift occurs when you choose to change how you represent the past in the now so that it no longer impacts you negatively. And as Mark Twain said, it's never too late to have a happy childhood. Your true power lies in the now. In the 1980s, Harvard professor of medicine, Herbert Benson, and his team of researchers they studied monks living in the Himalayan mountains who could, by using a yoga technique, raise the temperature of their fingers and toes by as much as 17 degrees. Now, the researchers also studied advanced meditators in Sikkim, India, where they were astonished to find that the monks could lower their metabolism by a whopping 64%. Now, in 1985, they actually made a video of monks drying cold, wet sheets with body heat alone. Monks spending winter nights 15,000 feet high in the Himalayas is also not so uncommon. Creativity, new inventions and technology, they're continually breaking down the walls of our beliefs about what's possible. So if your life is based on your beliefs, what if your beliefs are not true? In the movie, The Truman Show, Truman Burbank appears to have an ideal life. He's married with a lovely wife. He lives in a small town. And everything looks wonderful. What Truman doesn't know is that his life is actually the focus of a reality TV show, which has been aired since his birth. And he's the star of the show. His hometown is a giant studio set, and his friends are actually actors, hired actors, playing their role. Now, deep down, Truman believes that he's destined for greater things, and he plans his escape from this small hometown to see the world. And in order to do this, he needs to face his fear of the sea. When he finally faces his fear to sail away, what he discovers is that the horizon is actually the edge of the studio set. Perhaps your life is like a studio set created through your perceptions and beliefs about the world. So grab a pen and paper and let's challenge some of your beliefs right now. So what I want you to do is to list the nine most important things 
you believe you should do in your life. And then the second part, I want you to list the nine most important things you believe you should not do in your life. So the nine most important things that you should do and the nine most important things that you believe you shouldn't do. When you've done that, I want you to look at your responses and ask yourself against each belief, when did I learn this? And who did I learn it from? When did I learn this and who did I learn it from? What you'll discover is that many of your beliefs of your life are not your own. Many of your beliefs have been learnt from somebody else without you even challenging the truth of the belief. And because of this, you feel that somehow these beliefs that are limiting you are no longer your own. You begin to change them in the moment you recognize them. So imagine it's like turning on the light in a dark room so that you can instantly see what's been tripping you up when you've been walking around. Now the light's on. So now that you're aware that some of your beliefs don't belong to you, imagine that as you walk into your home, you're able to check in at the door absolutely everything in your life that's not working. So think of it a little like taking your dirty laundry to the dry cleaners, checking it in and then voila, two days later, taking advantage of the home delivery service, your dirty laundry arrives back at your home, fresh, clean and pressed. Now instead of checking your dirty laundry into the cleaners, just suppose you check all your beliefs in at the door. It will mean that you walk into a space and place where anything and everything is possible, starting anew where you can be truly a reflection of your perfection, of the connection to your true and perfect self. As you draw yourself to a higher degree of self-awareness, you're going to realize that a lot of your beliefs have been passed down to you through your family, through family and generations. So what would be some better beliefs to support you on your journey? Some of my new beliefs include, I'm always in the right place at the right time, or I'm always in the flow. Life is magical. And I always love, trust, and approve of myself unconditionally. Once you've decided on some better beliefs, then make sure you demonstrate that belief in your behavior to enforce the new belief. Remember, you learn through looking within. And when you can recognize yourself as your own creation, you then free yourself from the fear of living a less than satisfying life and expand the horizons of your beliefs. Stretch your heart, stretch your mind and the boundaries of what's possible. Are you ready to let go? and enjoy the ride.